I'm Nicolas Girard, thoracic oncologist at Institut Curie in Paris. Today I will discuss the data we present in our article, Optimizing Outcomes in EGFR Mutant Positive Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer, Which Tyrosine Kinase Inhibitor and When. In our article, we consider the data supporting the sequential use of available EGFR TKIs and key considerations for selection of first-line treatment. Mutation of the epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR gene, render lung tumors sensitive to targeted treatments with tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Four EGFR TKIs are currently available for treatment of EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer, of which the first generation TKIs, erlotinib and gefitinib, and the second generation RBV family blocker, afatinib, which are first-line standard of care. Unfortunately, acquired resistance to these agents is inevitable and the most common mechanism is the emergence of T790M mutation. Third generation EGFR TKI specifically target this mutation and one such agent, ozimertinib, has been approved in second line after showing striking efficacy in patients with T790M positive disease after progression on first line TKIs. More recently, ozimertinib improved efficacy versus erlotinib or gefitinib in the first line setting. While this data positions ozimertinib as frontline treatment option, it's currently unknown whether such an approach will provide net overall survival benefit versus sequential therapy where ozimertinib is reserved for second line use. Given the emergence of third generation TKIs, tumor genotyping is now recommended in order to guide subsequent therapy and molecular testing should be applied throughout treatment to understand tumor evolution and to inform treatment uh, decisions. Non-invasive plasma-based assays are being developed that are likely to make genotyping more accessible in the clinic. With the accrual of more and more molecular data, it's becoming clear that at least 50 to 70 percent of patients treated with first or second generation TKIs could potentially benefit from second line ozimertinib because they develop T790M mutation. In contrast, data regarding resistance mechanisms to uh, ozimertinib are sparse, and resistance mechanisms appear to be highly heterogeneous. Based on this data, most patients could benefit from a sequential approach with a first or second generation TKI followed by ozimertinib. Although when considered in isolation, first line ozimertinib is superior to uh, erlotinib and gefitinib, but targeted second line options are currently not well defined. Consequently, the majority of patients eligible for second line therapy would receive chemotherapy. At the moment, it's not known whether first-line ozimertinib confers overall survival benefit versus first or second generation TKI, and while ozimertinib is well tolerated, many patients will be subjected to chemotherapy at an earlier stage than they would, uh, than they would if they receive sequential TKIs. Although there is a lack of data assessing sequential treatment, rates of subsequent therapy in phase 3 trial of first or second generation TKIs were generally high. In addition, initial data from a postdoc analysis of afatinib phase 3 trials showed encouraging survival outcomes in patients who actually received afatinib followed by ozimertinib. Ultimately, Selection of optimal first-line treatment requires consideration of patient factors, subsequent therapy options, and the tolerability profile of the overall treatment sequence. Further data comparing sequential treatment regimens are also urgently required.